Welcome to Tank Radio. I'm Frank KG5AHJ, and today I'm building and unboxing and putting together my solar charged battery system for the CPAP machine. Yes, I said that right. Along with testing and seeing how it performs. So, play that awesome intro video! Here I am back at the workbench and I got some new toys in here. Yay! I have a bite little battery and a solar panel. Let's go ahead and get them unpacked. So this is the 60 watt solar panel. Uh, weighs about five pounds and it's foldable. I was hoping it would be a little bit smaller. It comes in about 21 inches across by 14 inches long. Just shy of two feet this way and a foot this way. I was hoping to take it backpacking. We'll see if I can find a backpack for it. It is five pounds, which is not too bad. I just wish it was a little bit more compact. I can't wait to get this out and see what it does. We'll take this out next. This should be just some extension cords. Oh wow, extra cables? I love how flexible these cables are compared to other power cables. Um, it's just a little bit unwieldy being loose like this with two cables. I added some um, zip ties around it about every foot or so and this is becoming one of my favorite cables. All right, and the next and final thing, Da, 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 da. The battery! Ooh, that was packed nicely. Heavy guy. This is a 20 amp hour 12 volt battery from Bioleno, and it's only about five pounds and it's very nicely compact. A little heavy, but um, it's, it's, it's 20 amps. It's gonna be heavy. There's a lot of cells in there. Look at man, this is nice. I like it. I like it. Then for the final piece to the ensemble is a Buddy Pull Power Mini. I got this courtesy of Jason. Um, this is one of his older models. I played with it a little bit last night. It's, it's very nice, compact, and I like how light it is. So this will be perfect to go backpacking with. All right, let's get some power pulls on some cables. Now, since I have this 12 volt adapter for my CPAP machine, I want to cut this cord and put power pulls on it. But I don't want to just get rid of this 12 volt adapter. I also going to put power poles on this end. So if I do need to use the old 12 volt adapter plug, I can plug it back in using the power poles and I'll still have the adapter. Before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and cut into this line to see what kind of wiring we have. And also to put a voltmeter on there to see which wire is giving us a positive current. Sometimes these manufacturers use the same color of wires inside there. So this approach will show us which line is actually positive without relying on them. Well, what is that? I think that's just shielding. Watch me f*** this up. Now I'm just trying to expose the inner bundle of wires. Let's go ahead and plug it into a 12 volt port and see what is what. What I'm seeing here is the inside wire is our positive wire and the outside shielding is our ground. I think I can make this work. Well, no going back now. Well, I got the soldering iron warming up here. Go ahead and prep this line, or this side also. I'm just peeling the jacket back here, cutting it off, then taking all this ground wire, pulling it to one side, and twisting it together. And there's my ground. Same thing with this side. 
I'm going to leave them separate until I get the power pole connected here connected so they don't have a chance to touch or I accidentally pulled the wrong wire over and sort it out. All right, here comes the hard part. Let's kind of cut those stragglers. I'm going to tin these. Now that is one solid piece of wire, or it's going to act like a solid piece of wire. I will call you the fuse bag. Hold it there. That was awkward. It's in there. Now how to do this guy without shorting. Pull that back a little more. Always cut away from you, is that what they say? Made a gigantic mess out of that. Mess those wires together. Maybe that got it? Looks like it. <laughs> you know, I'm getting the hang of this. Except this part. I keep forgetting how to insert this. that is upside down it is right but I think it needs to go the other way all right forget that for now let's go to red some time later come on hey Go now. Crap, too much, too much. Now I'm just going to solder the new exposed wire to just keep it all together. As you can tell here, I haven't quite mastered putting these pins in the end caps yet. I know this is not the usual thing I do. I do want to show my failures, but for time wise and since it's my channel, creative editing to show success and move on. Hey, finally got one. Oops, that needs to be on the other side though. I did a thing. I think I have electrical tape somewhere. I'll tape that up. But, yay! That's one side. Before we hook up the big expensive machine to my soldering job here, I'm gonna see if I can get a read on the bolts. It's constant, not fluctuating. Let's see if it turns on. ResMed! Woot! I did a thing right. Woot! 
I still need to solder this. So what I've learned is I need a little bit more of the shielding peeled away. And I'm still having trouble putting these on correctly onto the plastic. Also to note, put these on first. I'm gonna have to use duct tape for one of my connections. Pull out the battery. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. No fluctuating, no sorts. <laughs> Success. So here is the test rig for the battery. I have the 20 amp hour 12 volt battery plugged into the Buddy Pull Power Mini. Then that's going to the CPAP machine. Then the CPAP machine is providing positive air pressure to Tank General Papitan Bear. The test here is to see how long the BioLeno battery will last and also to prove the estimates I did in my previous video. Link is above! Unfortunately, the Buddy Pull screen turns off after set period of time and I cannot figure out a way to undo that. So yesterday was the battery drain test. This test ran for 14 hours on my test bench upstairs and it didn't drain the battery. To be honest, I was pulling less amperage out of it than I expected. The amp meter I was using to give me the value of how many amps it was draws wasn't really calibrated correctly, and I way overestimated on the capacity I needed for my system. That being said, after the 14 hour run, I still took my 20 amp hour battery downstairs, and I had a full night of eight hours of sleep. When I looked at the power mini in the morning to tell me how many amperage I used overnight, it was only 4.5. So I used on average a half a watt compared to when I was calculating everything it was 1.5. So I have three times of the capacity as I initially wanted. That's not a bad thing. Today is the recharge test. I wanna know how long it's gonna to take to recharge my battery with the 60 watt panel plugged into it. On this beautiful, fine, overcast day, but what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna leave it out. I turned off the sprinkler, so we'll see how long it takes to recharge. The test rig here is the BioLeno 60 amp solar charger plugged into the Buddy Pole Power Mini, and that's running to the 20 amp hour 12 volt battery. And right here, the GoPro battery died. Let's just jump to the wrap up. So today I set up the battery with the solar charge panel here, a 60 watt solar charge panel, outside for a good eight hours. It was overcast the entire day. I couldn't do anything about that. But I got 3.7 amp hours charged into the battery. 3.5 amp hours would get me most of the night on an overcast day. So on a day that I did have solid sunlight, this battery could have been recharged. Overall, I am very impressed with the system. So here's the system all laid out. Yay! Starting with the solar charger. Solar charger is going to the charge controller. The charge controller is going to the BioLeno battery. Then also my CPAP machine is powered by this 12 volt adapter. That's going to the BioLeno also to power it. And so Paddington Bear, General, Commander Paddington Bear can have power and sleep at night. 